just about halfway through the carcass installation of the kitchen and I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about how I go about it. Obviously I've set the whole job out, I've designed the kitchen, I know exactly where everything goes so it's a little bit easier for me than if you just turn up on site, someone gives you a plan, masses of units, you've got to start thinking for yourself, are the electrics in the right place, is the floor level, is the ceiling level. I've got the luxury here that I've got a perfectly level floor. And when I mean level, when I ran my laser around, it was plus, and my, plus or minus three millimeters, which is really good, which means that once I've chosen my datum, so in my case, the underside of work surface, top of carcass is where I start. And I like to have mine at around about 875 millimeters. So when you put a 30 millimeter work surface on top, it's around about 905 or nearly three foot in Imperial. What I will say is I'm working off a finished floor. If you're fitting a kitchen and it's not from a finished floor, so you might have ply to go on, tiles to go on, you need to accommodate that or you will struggle, especially if you've got an appliance like a freestanding washing machine to put in underneath, you will struggle to get that in because you need about 865 for a washing machine with the legs tightened right down. So be very careful that the client or you know exactly what the floor covering is gonna be. The other thing is as well, and this is a little tip, is if you have got an out of level floor, what you need to find is the highest spot and you need to start with the legs at the tightest point there for the simple reason being you could end up if you start there and you're already 10 mil higher sort of allowing for a little bit of space on the plinth board or the kickboard you could end up as you level around with 25 30 mil at the other end you see between the kickboard and the underside of the carcass so the other option would be come to the middle where you find the happy medium between the high and the low set that so you have to taper off a bit of a kickboard at one end and you haven't got so much of a gap on the kickboard at the other end. But that is so crucial about fitting a kitchen. It is all about setting out, thinking ahead. So I like to buy some of this economy, what we call two by one, so 50 by 20. And it's a really good material for setting out. I also use, is, use it as a datum at the back of my carcasses. My carcasses have got a service void behind them, which is pretty important to make sure you can get your waste pipes, your water pipes through, and allow enough space for appliances. Like a dishwasher, if you have got pipes passing behind it, you need to accommodate that or keep them low down because it does have some relief on the dishwasher. So what I use this for is the first job, I'll set this out and I'll mark all my unit positions on them, like a rod, like normal. I'll have a centre mark, in my case everything's centred. So here is the centre of my kitchen. And there you can see the MDF patrices that we've got and that just enables me to fix back everything really nicely, especially the batten that I was talking about. So on my batten, before I screwed up on the wall, I had all my points on there. So I had my carcass for the sink, space for the dishwasher, then my next unit, I've also got my panel spacing set. It's a millimetre and a half more than the panel. Just allow a little bit of breathing space there. Bearing in mind, we will be cutting the uh, granite or the solid surface directly into that window and have a very tight sealant. So I'm just allowing a bit of air space there. So you can see the baton was put through and that was put through to my level. Because my floor is nice and level, when I put my carcasses together, spin them upside down, put the legs on and set them all, in my case, 155 millimeters. So when I slide the carcass in, they're almost perfect. Then it's a very simple method of leveling up. So I started with the center unit. I start by centering it up, leveling it through, and then I work backwards, and then I check it across the diagonals too. And that's all in relation to my datum there. And then I add units and add units and start working away. So instead of starting at one end and stacking it all this way, the crucial point for me is the center line. So I go here and I work away. And I think that works really well for me. And then the wall units, so I'll infill the wall units. Then I've got an open shelving unit here that has a front frame, which is the painted front frame that goes on. So we have a special gap 
between that to allow the th thickness of the front frame. So that's just the way I've designed it. I mean, if it was a modular kitchen from say, one of the big manufacturers, Howden's, Wren's, I couldn't really use a traditional in-frame shaker. So this is like a modern shaker. So it's still got a shaker door, but instead of it being in a frame, with butt hinges, which probably wouldn't suit the nature of this job. It's more, it's a lay-on door. But I have got some really nice hinges. Blum have bought out a brand new color. Um, I'll show you them as we get a little bit further on. They're really, really nice. You wait till you see them. I've also got a new line of drawer boxes. So anyone in kitchen fitting will know all about the Legra box. This one here is a door, a full door but you pull it through and it comes with the bottom drawer. And then the next drawer you pull out and the next drawer you pull out. And what I like about that is, as far as storage is concerned, you can get a lot more in a drawer than you can if you stack stuff in a cupboard at the back. When you clear it out, you've got cans of food that have been there for, for years. These are exactly 600, which is the size you need for any appliance which doesn't go in a carcass. I have the same on the other end of the kitchen where there's a wine cooler, again, that's 600. So I do that, I fix them in, and then get all of the kitchen finished. So it just stiffens everything up. The other thing I wanna talk about as well is the plane on the front of the cabinets. The reason why I like to have a small service void and not bash my cabinet straight back, even though I built this and it's really true, you will get some undulation, you will get a little bit of in, you know, I say intolerance, you'll get some variation on a flat surface, especially over 4.2 meters long like this. So by allowing 10 or 15 millimeters, you can make sure you can pull a datum all the way through. So when you've got your carcasses and a straight edge along the fronts, they're all exactly in line. One thing that's really important is as you're putting a kitchen together, you're gonna to be drilling pilot holes. You're gonna be doing a bit of countersinking for screws that connects everything up. You are, in my case, I've got certain ones Cupboards have got a socket reliefed into the back, so you're gonna cut the backs out. These are all 18 millimeters thick, these backs. They're really nice and strong, and that generates a lot of dust. So I've always got a vacuum cleaner, and I have a policy when I'm working or anyone's helping me and we're doing interior work, as you make the dust, you vacuum the dust. I cannot stand when you, know, you, you lose yourself in the work for a couple of hours, and before you know it, you've trodden dust everywhere. And the other thing I have to think about here as well is keeping the dust to a very minimum, get it in the vacuum cleaner. I've got an M-class vacuum cleaner here. I don't want any dust to be laying around, and when I turn on the MVHR, it's gonna get drawn in and ruin my filter. So we've been fastidious, even when the decorators are on board and they do their rubbing down in between coats, they're vacuuming as they go. So it's a little bit anal, and people probably think, oh, he's a nightmare, this bloke, but. I suppose from your point of view, the thing that's going on is you've got a really awkward client, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, myself. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I'm just, um, you know, people often think that I'm a, a roofer or a first fixer, a wood butcher I've been called, and all kinds of other funny things like that. But um, I'm a joiner as well. So, um, you know, I, I can make this stuff um, and I, indeed, my very first kitchen, I made every single component by hand. I couldn't afford to go out and buy one. I could afford raw material. This is back in the 90s, but I had to make it all myself. And it was a labor of love, love even. But now, since I've discovered, for example, my supplier who's got the most amazing machinery and can produce this stuff far cheaper than I could produce it in time, um, it's, it's great. And he can produce it far more accurately. When I say accurately, they work to 0.1 of a millimeter, whereas I might work to one millimeter. So, I talked a little bit about how I was gonna construct the island unit, and I mentioned that I was gonna make a base. So, if I just move this, if you like that way, you'll see that here, there is a 25 millimeter MDF base, and it's actually sitting on top of tricoyer feet, and. The the reason for the tricoil feed was for, let's say there was an escape of water, sometimes that happens in a kitchen, and the water sits around for 24 hours or so. If it was in contact with the MDF, even moisture resistant MDF will take on that level of moisture. The tricoil is not gonna have any effect on that, so this could quite easily have a, a spillage of water 
and it will survive. This tribe coir will last and last and last. So that's just what I like to do there. Also um, provides, when the plinth is on as well, you know, it's only gonna be sat against the floor. So a little bit of ventilation gonna go through there as well, which is quite nice. So all the cabinets, by doing the base, now my floor was really, really level. By doing that, all I had to do then was get the cabinets on board they're automatically level, there's no messing around with feet. And because when you make an island unit up, for example, I've got two sets of drawers, an oven housing unit, I've got an open unit, and I've got one with a couple of doors on the other side, which is a cupboard. And then what we're having, our sort of hall around there, we're having the granite will go over the top, and then we've got like a live edge wrapped round breakfast bar, which is going to be here, mitered on the corner, all the way back round to there. And then this will have some stools on it, if you like. Um, so if I just sort of show you over the top, this is quite tricky, just let the camera focus slowly. So you can see that there's a nice void through the back here. This is for the oven, we've got all of our cabling here. This cabling, this is the ring. This is going to be providing sockets at either end under the um, work surface. And then there's this supply for the oven. Um, the whole thing is, is loose effectively, so if I wanted to reposition it slightly or fine tune it, I can just ease it backwards and forwards. And that's why I like to have my flooring running underneath, whether it's tiles, in this case Candine. Um I just think it's a much nicer job. I, I did mention earlier that if it was real wood, engineered wood, it's not advisable to sit your units on top of it because the weight of this, at the moment we're probably something like 200 kilos plus. Add on to that your solid surface, which is going to be probably another 100 kilos. There's 300 kilos there, third of a ton thereabouts, um, and that will hold that floor in so tight that it wouldn't allow for its expansion and contraction. And if you're using an engineered floating type floor, which are really popular, then that is a real consideration. So what it does mean is you've got to put your kitchen in and allow for the thickness of your finished floor something like 20 mil, sometimes 15, 14. And then you have to come up to where the legs are, or in my case, the base. Um, but as I say, I much prefer the flooring to run underneath. It's much, much easier for the floor layers. Okay, you buy a bit more flooring, a few more meters. Anyway, um, just a quick thing. I'm just doing some drawers. Now I'm using Legra boxes from Blum. It is superb. Blum products are superb. Anyone in this sort of furniture industry, kitchen industry, will use Blum products and I'm using Legra box which simply means that the sides are super slim and they're metal. They have a chipboard, you know, veneered back and bottom so it's nice and solid and then they have the front which is directly on top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one of these together because if you've not actually done one of these it's quite useful. Now all of these are pre-drilled in the factory, so it's a matter of just mounting the runners. But earlier on, I put in one of the bin systems, and that was from scratch. Now that was really interesting because the carcass wasn't drilled, and the instructions, now I'm pretty savvy, but the instructions were one sheet, it was a bit like an Ikea instruction, they were one sheet, and, um, it took me a bit of a while to fathom it out because it didn't mention the screw parts or whatever, but it's a bit like anything. You just have to go about it and approach it in a sort of sensible way. So it gave me the bin height, in my case 500, and then I look on the chart and it says for a 500 bin, then there's a, there's a, a measurement to the first screw, and then the first screw back is about 37 screw, eight millimeters. So to enable me to do that accurately, I've got a section here which is effectively the same height as the side here and I marked this out and I piloted that really sensibly and so to drill the carcass I had that in situ clamped bang 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 popped it over to the other side and away you go and that just means that if you try to mark these in situ it's uncomfortable it's a dark veneer Sometimes it's quite hard to get that positioning just, just perfect. So this is a neat little trick that you can do. You can just keep this, and I'll keep this if I've got any other drilling to do. I'll keep this, and I'll do all my drilling on here. It's much easier to set it out on the flat and drill them nice and true. Um, what I used was the draw runner on top, a centering bit with a really tiny pilot, 
to get them nice and square and true. Then I went through with the five millimeter bit, which is the size for the screws. So I'm gonna put a Legro box together for you. So if I show you how over here, it consists of a left, a left and right plate. Now this goes onto the, the back. This is the back. Now I've got a rebate here, and the reason I've got a rebate here is Blum designed this to be made with a 16 millimeter thick base and back. I'm using an 18 millimeter base and back. It's because it's the color that I wanted. Um, and so what that means is I've had to rebate this back to 16 millimeters. Then what I need to do is mount these plates on now and then they just literally clip into the sides. So we'll mount those on. That's the first job. Get some specs on because I'm going blind in my old age. And basically they need to be flush with the top and they were pre-piloted these so it was pretty straightforward. 16 mil screw. Sometimes when you're using a countersunk screw, it pulls, as you're tightening up, it, it acts like a, a wheel and it turns everything up. So sometimes it's best to accommodate that when you put your first screw in, as you know it's going to go that way, just set it back a bit and when you tighten it up, it's going to want to prime like that. And put a couple of screws in for now. Now the next thing is we get some sides. This is called Havana Brown. It's a lovely colour. Use the message here. These are the narrow drawers. Um, that's that side. That's the left. That's the left. right. So now we've got these clips in, they basically plug in to the end, so it's a really nice simple system, clicks in like that, click the other side in, that's it. Now the next trick is to slot in the base. Now the base has got a double rebate. Again, this is the standard rebate for a 16 mil board. And then I've also added another two millimeter rebate here on the table saw, which was interesting. And then these slide in, so they actually slide into the gap between there and there. We'll just ease that in. There we go. And that finishes a bit the front of that. And then that's screwed as well. The objective is to make sure that everything's nice and tight. So the shoulder is tight, the shoulder is tight there. And then attach a couple of screws. The system itself is really well supporting, it's a self-supporting system, so these bases are supported fully by the draw runner. Blummer have spent decades developing their systems for ease of use, ergonomics and functionality. And Blum also do a range of inserts for, I'm not happy with that one, for their drawers. For example, we've got items that for storing plates, etc. And so they've got some really neat kit.
And then what we do then, attach the base in the back. Again, these are pre-piloted. I'm showing a two mil shoulder. Again, that's because I'm using 18 mil board for a 16 mil step. Just a bit more solid. I'm using an MDF screw here, so they're very good at, I've got the pilot screw here. They're very good at self-piloting. They don't part the chipboard in any way. So that's it, that's how easy it is to put a Negra box together. And you can see that because they're so slim, you get a maximum amount of space in the drawer. So now we just need to mount two runners in the cabinet, the left and the right, 500 millimetre long. There we go. We'll go and mount those in the cabinet. Sorry you're following me around a bit. the pilot and also sits dead flush in the runner. So, hardly any power. those in. And if you've used their products before, Blum, you'll know that they simply click in and you can release them once they're in by these natty little catches. So, it's literally a matter of sliding it back and it will literally do its own thing. You'll hear it locate, and that's the kitty. And then it's literally, you know if it's working right. It's a full extension. And soft close. There we have it. Well, I've got about another 11 of those to do, so I better crack on.